Hello, I would like to welcome you to our Clinical Teaching on the Run series for doctors. I am Dr. Leslie Ann Sedonik and I will be walking you through this online presentation. This presentation is one of six presentations that highlights some key principles for effective teaching in the clinical setting. Today, we will focus on teaching learners how to think, specifically how to facilitate their diagnostic reasoning skills. We will begin today's session by comparing how expert versus novice clinicians think. Next, we will look at how a series of questions or a framework of questioning can guide our learners through the steps of diagnostic reasoning before you see the patient. Finally, we will review two teaching strategies that can be used in the clinical setting around the case presentation to facilitate a learner's diagnostic reasoning skills. Let us begin with a definition of clinical reasoning. Clinical reasoning is defined as the cognitive thinking process whereby a physician gathers appropriate data, arrives at a diagnosis, identifies the treatment of choice, and gives a reasoned recommendation to the patient. Sound clinical reasoning is the foundation for clinical competence. In medical school, learners are taught how to think through a problem. The reasoning process that they are introduced to is deliberate, analytical, and rational. It is meant to reflect the scientific inquiry process. They begin by identifying problems, generating hypotheses, explaining mechanisms, gathering data, testing their hypotheses, and then finally applying this to a problem. This process is called the hypothetical deductive reasoning process. In the clinical setting, we also introduce our learners to a thinking process that is also deliberate, analytical, and rational, the clinical reasoning process. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the first part of that reasoning process, their diagnostic reasoning skills. The first step of this process is to gather data and analyze information systematically from a patient. Students follow a set sequence of questions when interviewing patients. They begin with a history of presenting illness, review of systems, past medical and surgical history, medications, allergies, etc. They then go on to do a standard clinical examination of the patient. Finally, they may choose to order additional investigations. One approach to teaching diagnostic reasoning skills is to use a framework of questions to guide a learner through a patient encounter. The learner and the preceptor begin with an approach to the patient's problem. This approach is based on pathophysiology and or anatomy. The learner then gathers and sequentially analyzes the relevant information from the patient's history, examination, and investigations to test their differential diagnosis. Finally, the learner will arrive at a provisional or working diagnosis. This model is very thorough but can be time consuming as all of the information is analyzed before arriving at the likely diagnosis. Let me give you a clinical example. Let's say I'm seeing a patient who is pregnant with bleeding. I will ask the student to begin to organize their differential diagnosis based on anatomy. So they'll say, well, she could be vaginal bleeding because of bleeding from the uterus or the cervix or the vagina. Next, I will ask them to generate a differential diagnosis based on pathophysiology or the mechanism of the disease. Um, they'll say, well, I guess she could be bleeding because of the lining of the uterus is shedding because there's not enough hormones or maybe the placenta is separating from the uterus. 
I will ask for a clinical diagnosis that reflects this disease. And they will say, well, I guess you could have an ectopic or a miscarriage or placenta previa. Then, before they see the patient, I will ask, what information do they need to collect from the history, the physical examination, to test their hypotheses and narrow down their differential diagnosis? What further investigations, if any, will be needed again to narrow this diagnosis down further? The learner then gathers and sequentially analyzes the relevant information from the history, physical examination, and investigation to test these clinical hypotheses. Finally, the learner will arrive at a provisional or working diagnosis. This model is very thorough, but it can be time consuming as all of the information is analyzed before arriving at the likely diagnosis. The framework is an excellent tool to use with novice learners when you have time to work through a patient's case together. However, many clinical teachers rely on the learner to first gather the information and then report back the information to the preceptor via a case presentation. The case presentation is the essential tool of communication between a clinical supervisor and the medical learner. The learner presents the patient's information to the supervisor, the supervisor listens, and then asks the learner questions. There are several strategies for facilitating these diagnostic reasoning skills around the case presentation. In this section, we will outline two types, the one-minute preceptor and the SNAPS method. After presenting the facts of a case to you, the first step in the one-minute preceptor is for the preceptor to get a commitment from the learner. What do you think is going on with this case? What is the most likely diagnosis? After the learner gives you a diagnosis, the preceptor then probes for supporting evidence. What led you to that conclusion? What information from your history or your physical supported that diagnosis? And how did you rule out other diagnoses? After this case discussion, then the preceptor should teach around the case. This usually implies providing a general rule or concept, an important take-home point from the patient's case. It is not meant as a launching point for a lecture about a specific topic. For example, if I'm seeing a patient with ectopic pregnancy, the take-home point might be the role of beta-HCG in diagnosing an ectopic. After this general rule, then the preceptor should reinforce what was right or what the learner did correctly, followed by suggestions on how the learner could improve their performance. If you are not familiar with this technique, I would recommend that you watch one of the excellent online video demonstrations. We have embedded a link in the comment section under this YouTube video. Pause the video, open the link, watch the demonstration, then close that window and return to our presentation. While the one minute preceptor is a teacher centered technique, the SNAPS method is a learner centered technique. SNAPS is initiated by the learner with contributions by the preceptor and the end result is a collaborative case presentation. The learner needs to be taught how to present a cat case using the SNAPS format, as SNAPS does not have the same format as a traditional case presentation. The key here is that the learner needs to condense and limit the case presentation and then move quickly to the analysis of facts. The steps involved include summarizing the history and findings. Again, this is a selective case presentation, and this is where you can save a lot of time in the clinical setting. Rather than the learner telling you all of the information about the patient, you ask them to present only that data that is relevant to the patient's problem. The case presentation in this manner should not take more than three minutes. Then, you will ask them 
to offer up two or three possible diagnoses, a narrow differential diagnosis. They then analyze their own differential by comparing and contrasting these diagnoses. The preceptor, if they have any questions or uncertainties about their reasoning or their differential. For example, they may ask, uh, did I miss out any important differential diagnoses? Finally, they will offer up a plan of further investigation, management or treatment recommendations for this patient. And they end this SNAPS presentation by selecting a self-directed learning issue, something that they would like to learn more about, about around this case presentation. Perhaps it was something they did not know, a differential diagnosis that they were not familiar with that they need to read up more about. Again, if you would like a video demonstration, the link is embedded below in our comments section. So let us compare and contrast these two teaching techniques. Both of them can be applied to the case presentation after the learner has seen the patient. The one minute preceptor offers some advantages. First, the learner does not need to be taught how to do the technique. They can use their traditional case presentation. The technique is initiated by the preceptor it does focus the preceptor on, on facilitating the analytical reasoning skills of our learners. It reminds the preceptor to teach a take-home point from the case, and it also prompts the preceptor to provide feedback about what the learner did well versus what the learner could improve. In contrast, SNAPS is a technique that needs to be taught to both the learner and the preceptor, the learner initiates this technique. The learner is responsible for analyzing their own thinking. And the learner is also responsible for identifying their own learning deficiencies or needs. So now that we have walked through how the medical students are taught to think and how we might facilitate this analytical process in the clinical setting, ask yourself, is this how you solve clinical problems? Is this how expert clinicians think? Most experts will in fact have a diagnosis in mind long before all the facts are in. The expert often uses shortcuts in their reasoning process. These shortcuts are called heuristics. The expert may use visual clues like age or sex, clues from the patient's history, and past experience with patients presenting in a similar manner to recognize patterns of illness. This initial diagnosis is often intuitive and not analytical. This initial diagnosis is often involves the recognition of these patterns of illness or illness scripts or recognition of a single past patient who presented in a similar manner, an instance script. The two ways of thinking about the patient's problem are not exclusive to novices or experts. Learners develop pattern recognition early on, and experts often merge the initial intuitive process with an analytical process. For example, if a patient is presenting in an atypical manner, something doesn't quite add up, the expert will often slow down and revert to a more analytical and deliberate problem-solving approach. Both ways of approaching a patient's problem, intuitive and non-analytical versus analytical, are prone to error. For example, relying heavily on the visual and contextual cues that we re rely on to recognize a pattern of illness can result in prematurely dismissing or ignoring a possible diagnosis. Also, our feelings or biases towards patients can heavily affect our reasoning process as well as other factors such as fatigue and multitasking. Thus, clinical reasoning evolves from novice to resident to expert. 
It is important to, explicit, to be explicit about the type of reasoning process that one is applying to solving a patient's problem. As for the expert, their immediate recognition of the pattern of disease and quick diagnosis can seem confusing to the novice. How did they make the diagnosis without getting all of the information? The learner and the patient may also seem confused when the preceptor does not need to take an incomplete history or physical before feeling confident about the diagnosis. So how can teachers facilitate this evolution in reasoning? There are several ways that preceptors can facilitate both patterns of thinking. First, the preceptor can demonstrate how to gather data efficiently and effectively and they can focus the learner on interpreting that data. They can encourage the learner to present the data in a selective way with a case presentation. They can teach around the case presentation using analytical questions. They can ask the learner to think out loud. For example, when deciding on further investigations, the preceptor can ask the learner why. Why do you want to order this up? other investigation or why is that piece of data important from the history or the physical exam. In regards to non-analytical thinking, it's important to highlight patterns of illness. When a patient presents in a certain way, draw the learner's attention to pathognomonic findings. When you see a patient, label that patient as typical or atypical case presentation. Share your own instance scripts or clinical experiences and ask your learner to check in with their own feelings about what do you think is going on? What does your gut tell you? So today we reviewed some key questioning strategies that may be used to facilitate the diagnostic reasoning skills of our learners. The framework can be used with a patient encounter and the one minute preceptor and snaps can be used following the patient encounter when discussing the case presentation. In our next session, we will focus on therapeutic reasoning. Again, how we can use frameworks or questioning strategies to facilitate this reasoning skill in our learners. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this online presentation. For other presentations and educational resources, please refer to our faculty development website at UBC. For other useful videos, please feel free to explore the Practical Prof website by the University of Alberta, which is a wonderful resource.